Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycle by Little Toe where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. This is the sixth and final dress of my Reformation Velvet Dress Recreation series. It's a little late, but it's done, so if you wanna check out the other five dresses I've made, I'm gonna link those down below. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this thrift at night dress into this dress. So let's get right to it. The dress I'm going to be recreating is the Mora dress. There is a ton of design elements that go into this dress, but since it is the last dress in my velvet dress series, I thought I'd give myself a little bit of a challenge. The Reformation Mora dress retails for $298. This dress has a slim fitting bodice that features a deep V neckline, three dainty buttons along the waist, and these tiered ruffled sleeves. It also has a relaxed midi length skirt. The Mora dress has a full coverage back bodice piece with an invisible zipper along the center back. Let's take a quick look at what I'll be upcycling today. I found this nightdress at my local thrift store for $1.50. I obviously knew this had to be mine the moment I saw it. As you know by now, I can't resist a garment that's in need of a makeover. This nightdress smelled awful and reeked of cigarette smoke, but damn it, it was truly the comfiest thing I've ever put on. I'm not ashamed to admit that I lounged in this for an undisclosed amount of time after I washed it, of course. Here is the game plan. From the top section of the nightdress, I'll cut out the two pieces I need for the front of my top. I'll also cut out the piece I need for the waistband. From the back top section, I'll cut out the piece I need for my back bodice. Then, using the fabric from the bottom front section, I'll cut out the two pieces I'll need for the back of my skirt, and they'll be joined with a seam in the center back. From the back of the nightdress, I'll cut out my front skirt piece. I'll seam rip the original zipper from the nightdress and install it to the left side of my dress. I'll also be reusing the original sleeves to recreate the new tiered ruffled sleeves. I found the perfect pattern to use for this upcycle from Mood Fabrics. It's free, I'm gonna link it down below and let's take a quick look at it. This is the free pattern that I'll be using for this upcycle. As you can see here, this dress has a very similar silhouette to the Mora dress. I'll make sure to include the link to this pattern down below. I've printed out the pattern and here I am taping all of it together and then cutting out the pattern pieces. This is what it looked like when I was done. I do have to make a few modifications to the pattern, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. Here is the original bodice front pattern. I'll be using the size two pattern as a guide and I start out by drawing a line from this point to this point. This line marks the new neckline. I won't be using this section because based on this pattern, this is meant to be folded under to create the facing. Now, from the shoulder seam, I measure 14 inches and make a mark. I want my waistband to be three inches tall, so I measure up three inches and mark from this point. Now, I draw a curved line to join these two points. Using parchment paper, I trace out my modified front bodice pattern. Add a half inch seam allowance all the way around and then cut. This is my modified front bodice pattern. I'm only making a slight modification to the back bodice, so I traced and cut out the pattern onto some parchment paper. There is no seam allowance in the center back since I'll be cutting the fabric on fold. Along the shoulder seam of the front bodice, I'll sew a basting stitch to create gathers. This will make this section one inch shorter after I've created the gathers. Because of this, I'll have to adjust the shoulder seam of the back bodice as well. I draft a new neckline, add a half inch seam allowance, and then cut. Here is my modified back bodice piece. On to the waistband that will only be added to the front. I start out by drawing a straight line. The length of my waistband is 14 and a half inches, so I divide that in half to get seven and a quarter inches. Now I draw a perpendicular line that is three inches tall. From the first line that I drew, I measure seven and a quarter inches and make a mark. Now I draw another line three inches above the original line. On this top line, I measure and mark at seven and a half inches. Join these two points together with a diagonal line. This line will be the center front and this will be the side seam. Add a half inch seam allowance all the way around and then cut. Here is the waistband pattern. I go ahead and cut out my front bodice piece as well as my waistband. Then I cut out symmetrical pieces for the other side. I also cut out these pieces that I'll use as my facing. Starting with the front bodice piece, I'll sew a basting stitch from this point to this point. Now I'm going to gather the fabric until the length matches the length of the top of the waistband. I place the two pieces together right sides facing and pin to secure. Then I'll sew together with a straight stitch. Now I'll join my facing pieces together along this seam. These will be placed right sides facing and sewn together like this a little later. Go ahead and repeat these steps for the other front bodice pieces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew a basting stitch along the shoulder seams. It should look like this after you've gathered the fabric. Moving on to the back bodice. As you can see here, I've gone ahead and made my facing piece that I'll sew to the top a little later. Now I'm placing my front bodice pieces right sides facing and I'll pin those together and sew with a straight stitch. I've sewn the shoulder seams together and now I'll sew this side seam together, but I'll sew this invisible zipper to the other side. This is what the top looks like now with the right side seam sewn together and the zipper closure on the left side. Now I'm going to make the buttonhole loops for the waistband. 
I cut out a strip of fabric that is three quarters of an inch wide. Then I fold both sides to the center and then fold again to hide all of the raw edges. I'll sew along the length of the strip of this fabric with a straight stitch. This is what it should look like after sewing. Now I'll cut a piece that is about three inches long. I'll sew my first buttonhole on the seam where the top meets the waistband. Make a loop like this, place it where you want your buttonhole loop to be and sew to secure. Once you've sewn it to the top, it should look something like this. Go ahead and sew the other two buttonhole loops. This is what it should look like. Moving on, I've gone ahead and sewn my front and back facing pieces together. Now I'll pin this to my top, making sure that they are right sides facing and sew to secure. I've sewn the facing to the top and now I'm just tucking the facing under. Then I'll top stitch all the way around to make sure the facing doesn't try to peek out. Look how nice and neat this looks. Now I'm going to hand sew these pearl buttons along their corresponding buttonhole loops. So the original dress has velvet covered buttons, but I don't have a kit and I'm trying to get this dress done before it gets dark tonight. So for right now, these pearl buttons are just gonna have to do. But if you do know a good tutorial or if you know how to make velvet covered buttons, please let me know in the comments below because I do eventually wanna switch these out. But for right now, I'm gonna try the top on to see how everything is fitting. Here is my top on and I'm pretty happy with the way that it's fitting, but as you can see here, it is a little bit big in the waist. So I'm just going to be sewing two darts in the back to make it more fitted. All I'm going to do is pull this extra fabric back until I'm happy with the way that it fits. And then I'm just going to use a safety pin to pin it in place. Here is the top with the safety pin marking the excess fabric. I'm replacing the safety pin with two sewing pins so I can smooth out the fabric to get a precise measurement. The excess fabric measures six and a half inches. I divide that in half and each of my darts will be three and a quarter inches wide. I turn my top inside out so I can draft my darts and mark the center point with a pin. I measure and mark it four inches from the center point. This will be the center of the dart, which measures three and a quarter inches wide and nine inches tall. I had to make this dart pretty tall since its base is so wide. Now repeat on the other side, and once you've sewn your darts, you should have something that looks like this. Here's what the top looks like on. I'm pretty happy with the way that it fits, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the sleeves. This is the original sleeve of the nightdress. I took off about an inch on either side and cleaned up the shape along the top. I measure three and a half inches from the hem of the sleeve and draw a line. Then I measure four and a half inches from the top of the sleeve seam and draw another line. Using some bias tape, I'm going to place it on the line I just drew and sew along the top and bottom. Repeat for the bottom line. These will be the casings for my elastic. You can use whatever ribbon or tape that you have on hand. I also sewed a basting stitch along the top of the sleeve for the gathers I'll be making later. I've attached safety pins to both ends of the elastic and I'll feed it through the casing. Sew on both ends with a straight stitch securing the elastic. Repeat for the other casing. With both elastics sewn in, fold the sleeves right sides facing and sew with a straight stitch along the sleeve seam. Here is what my sleeve looks like now. If you didn't want to make the casing for the elastic, you could also go ahead and just sew the elastic right onto the sleeve with a zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin my sleeve to my top, making sure that the seam of the sleeve lines up with the side seam of the top. I've pinned the sleeves about three quarters of the way through, and now I'm going to pull the basting stitch that I made earlier to create the gathers. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin the rest of the sleeve to the top and then sew to secure. Once you've sewn the sleeve to the top, you should have something that looks like this. Repeat all of these steps to make the other sleeve. Here is the top with the sleeves on. They are a little bit big for my taste, but I think I've managed to recreate a pretty similar look to the original dress, so let's move on to the skirt. This is the pattern for the front of the skirt. As you can see here, I only copied the shape of the waistband. The original pattern has a very wide skirt, but the fabric I had left was limited, so I cut my skirt as wide as my fabric would allow. The length of my skirt is 32 inches. I cut my front piece on folds, so here is what the full piece looks like. I followed the same steps and cut out my two back pieces that I'll sew together along the center back. I've sewn them together and now I'll sew the darts in the back of my skirt, making sure they match the corresponding darts from the back of my top. Before I sew my front and back skirt pieces together, I wanted to show you guys these pockets that I actually saved from the original nightdress. And I feel like it would be a disservice to this entire upcycle if I didn't include this to my new dress. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew these pockets to my skirt pieces before assembling the skirt together. This is the right side of the skirt. As you can see, it's pinned from the waist to the hem. For the left side, I've only pinned the front and back pieces together right under the pocket to the hem and left the top open since I'll be sewing the invisible zipper here. My skirt is now sewn together along the side seams, but I made sure to leave the top left side open for the zipper. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pin it to the top and then sew to secure. Now that the top and skirt are sewn together, I'm going to sew the rest of the invisible zipper to the skirt. Guys, I just installed the zipper and then it broke. It just, it just broke. 
I am slightly frustrated right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hem the dress by folding it up about a quarter of an inch and then sewing to secure. And then I'm gonna eat something because I'm a little hangry and then I'm going to replace the zipper. Ugh! In that order, I hemmed my dress by folding it up once and then sewing, then ate some ramen while watching Bling Empire, then seam ripped the old zipper out while receiving emotional support from Daisy, and then finally installing a new zipper. Here is a reminder of the nightdress in its former life and this is what it looks like now. I'm so happy with the way this dress turned out. I actually really like the pearl buttons and the way it stands out against the blue. I think this dress looks really similar to the Reformation Mora dress for a fraction of the cost and the best part is that my version has pockets. Let me know what you think of this upcycle in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if there's anything you'd like me to recreate, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more photos of this dress, make sure you follow me on Instagram at littletoe and on TikTok at dotlittletoe. I'll see you guys in the next one and as always, thank you so much for watching.